I'd like to talk to you about an idea that I've been pursuing for the last three years. Some might call it a moonshot, but I believe it's the only way to solve a burning problem. The idea is to create a free HIV vaccine. My co-founder, Dr. Reed Rubesalman, and I created a nonprofit initiative called Immunity Project to make this idea a reality. So why is this needed? It might sound obvious, but I'd like to tell you why we think a free HIV vaccine is so important. First, you cannot change human behavior. No matter how good of a job we do at solving accessibility and improving education, human beings are, are completely unpredictable. Second, um, most of the people who are currently living with HIV cannot afford the cost of daily therapy. And the countries that have the highest populations of people living with HIV cannot afford to offer the same standard of care like we have here in the UK or back home in the US. This is why the vaccine uh, needs to be free. So there are lots of amazing, brilliant people who've been working on this problem for decades. We're doing something radically different because we're copying something that already works in nature. You probably didn't know this, but one out of 300 people living with HIV have a natural immunity to the virus. We call these people HIV controllers. While everyone else's immune systems are destroyed, devastated by the virus, HIV controllers are somehow able to defeat it. We believe that HIV controllers have a special ability to target, uh, target weak points in the virus. Uh, they're able to target biological markers that we call epitopes. When you attack the virus at these epitopes, you force it to mutate into a dormant state that it can't easily mutate away from, and you render it inert. The goal of our vaccine is to turn everyone into an HIV controller. An HIV vaccine of any kind would obviously be a great thing to have. Why hasn't this happened already? What are we doing differently? We have two new things. First, software developed by Microsoft Research and others that help us, helps us determine which epitopes on the surface of the virus HIV controllers preferentially target. Amazingly enough, the algorithm used is very similar to those used in spam filter technology uh, for email. And second, we have a novel drug delivery system. Our approach is a game changer. This is our vaccine delivery system. We are using biodegradable microspheres to create a Trojan horse for your immune system. Our biodegradable microspheres are programmable. These spheres are programmed with the epitopes that HIV controllers preferentially target. It's a Trojan horse because when you're, when the spheres are introduced into your body, your immune system attacks them like they're an infectious disease. And in the process of attacking them, your body learns about the epitopes favored by HIV controllers, and your body learns how to target uh, the virus just like controllers do. The video I'm about to play uh, shows our vaccine delivery system in action. You're gonna see human white blood cells attacking our biodegradable microspheres through a process called phagocytosis. So the dark spots are our spheres, and uh, the light blobs are uh, human white blood cells. If our vaccine works, it has the potential to be both therapeutic and preventive. This means that we have the potential to help the 35 million people currently living with HIV. Over 4,000 people a day die from AIDS-related illnesses. That's like 10 747s falling out of the sky every single day. This is the series of steps that we need to complete to take this great idea for a vaccine forward. The first step is testing it in animals. We were able to successfully test our approach in over 100 mice, and our data was peer-reviewed and published in the medical journal Vaccine. The next step was to test our vaccine with human blood in a test tube. We were able to show that we can take vaccinated blood in a test tube and the vaccinated blood actually kills some HIV-infected cells. The next step is a human clinical trial. 
we are collaborating with experienced HIV investigators to design and execute a phase one slash two human clinical trial as soon as possible. This is our vaccine manufacturing machine. It's fully operational and we're working to make it GMP compliant as fast as possible so we can move forward with our first human clinical trial. The way we make our vaccine is very interesting and our delivery system has some unique attributes that I'd love to share with you. First, it has the potential to be nasal inhalable. Making a vaccine nasal inhalable makes it easier to administer. You don't need needles and you don't need trained personnel to administer the vaccine to patients so you can make the needed impact much faster. And second, it's room temperature stable. This is a really big deal. Over 90% of vaccines need to be refrigerated from point of manufacturing to administration to a patient. And in many countries around the country, around the world, that's impractical, results in higher cost, and means that people don't get the vaccines they so desperately need. Now, as huge as solving HIV will be, there may be an even bigger opportunity here. Earlier, I mentioned that our vaccine platform is programmable. Think about this. If there are people out there who have a natural immunity to HIV, it stands to reason that there are people who have a natural immunity to other infectious diseases. In fact, we know that 13% of the North American population has a natural immunity to hepatitis C. We believe there are controllers out there for common cold, viruses that cause various forms of cancer, possibly even Ebola. Now, if Mother Nature is doing her job, we may all be controllers for something. Imagine a world where you can take software combined with a novel drug delivery system to rapidly create vaccines for nearly any virus. A world where we can take each of our strengths and give them to everyone else. All of this sounds really great, right? A guy flew here from Oakland, California to tell you about a promising approach for an HIV vaccine. So why am I standing here and not working with our team on the ground to actually complete our first human clinical trial, human clinical trial now? It turns out that there are significant obstacles to creating a free HIV vaccine, many that we didn't fully understand when we began this journey. The reality check for us is that I'm a college dropout. I have a diploma from the DMV so I can drive, but that's all I have. My co-founder is a Stanford-trained physician. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He invented inhalable insulin. He has 60 patents in drug delivery technology, and he's a master's in computer science. It turns out that he's also a dropout. He dropped out of the computer science PhD program at MIT. Now, we do have team members on our team that have significant experience working with HIV, but neither of us as founders invested the last many decades of time working on this particular problem. We do, however, have a unique blend of skills. Reed is a computer scientist, a drug delivery expert, and he has a proven ability to create things that the world needs. Now, the second problem is funding. How are projects like this funded? The answer primarily is grants. Now, there's lots of great work out there that's very well funded, but there's a lot of work out there that simply isn't. Here's a telling statistic. According to Scientific American, researchers in the US spend approximately 40% of their time filling out grant applications. 40%. I have friends who spend a lot more than that. In 2014, the Boston Globe published a story about researchers at Harvard who were having trouble securing needed grant funding. Kit Parker, a bioengineering and applied physics professor there, was quoted in the article saying he felt more like a hustler than a scientist. We all have a very serious problem if researchers from Harvard are feeling like they have to hustle funding to keep their labs open instead of focusing on their research. Grants are a lot like lottery tickets. One day you hope you win the big one. So how are we solving these problems? The answer to the first is that we don't take no for an answer. We are willing this to be. The data from our first animal study was peer reviewed and published in the medical journal Vaccine, and we're working on publishing more of our work as soon as possible. 
Our only regret is that in the time it takes for us to persevere, the world goes without something that just might work. Now, in terms of funding, the answer there is that we're being very creative. When we first launched Immunity Project, we tried crowdfunding, and we were able to raise $462,000 in less than three weeks. Now, we're working on some new experiments to help us fund our, our first human clinical trial. We've also had some success in the past in securing grants, um, and we're working on pursuing more. In fact, after this presentation, I'm going back to my hotel room to fill out more paperwork. Cross your fingers for us that one of them comes through. We are very lucky to have the support of amazing organizations like Until There's a Cure and Y Combinator. Until There's a Cure is a iconic nonprofit focused on HIV and AIDS advocacy and research. Y Combinator is the top tech accelerator in the world. We're very lucky to have their support. We wouldn't be here today without their help. This is my co-founder, Dr. Reed Rupsaman, in 1985 in San Francisco at the height of the AIDS epidemic. He had many patients with AIDS and every single one of them died. There was nothing he could do about it then. Now there is. During the course of this presentation, 30 people died of AIDS. The only way to end this epidemic is with a vaccine. We would love to work with each and every one of you to end AIDS. Thank you very much for hearing our story, and thanks to the TEDx Morgate team for having us.